I'm CK. Tonight we have another kit from Jolin Labs out of Italy. This is the second kit of theirs I've built or will be building. It is their goblet. It is a filter, uh, optocoupler and mostly analog and with some other interesting features to it. Let's put it together, see how easily it goes together and I hope you enjoy the video. Here's the packaging. Jolin packages their kits in cardboard cylinders. Let me put my visor on because I forgot again. I always do. Not always, but 95% of the time. Pick this up from thonk.co.uk as I do most of my Eurorack modules. Pop it open. Ah, again, again with the pink confetti. I'm not a fan of this. Again, it's not as bad as glitter, but it's pretty bad. The rest of the packaging is pretty much like the previous one I built of theirs. Get rid of all this pink confetti stuff or magenta, whatever you want to call it. Magenta seems to be their thing. We've got magenta rubber band on the power cord, magenta packaging. And then two little stickers again. Already got those. So this looks like the control board and the last time uh, their, their circuit board was also their front panel. I think this might be the same. Oh gosh, and again mostly surface mount and it's all done for us. So all we're going to be doing is putting on uh, two, looks like two sliders. This may be capacitive. Uh, and these right here, you can see there's a little clear panel here and a clear panel here. If you look to right on the sides, there's two, there are uh, LEDs so they'll be brightening things up there. Here's their power connector. They set up their circuitry so you don't have to worry about the polarity. Just plug the cable in and they don't use the dual pin style. So again we got some sliders. We got uh, jacks here. We've got these are pots and this I don't know what that is. Uh, might be a switch or rotary switch or something like that or a push button. Don't know see what's in the bag but also this means because it's all already surface mounted and we're just putting the controls on this is going to go pretty quickly geez I can't even open a paper bag well I am such a spaz with packaging more magenta confetti Arg. like the mechanical bits. And good plastic or paper packaging so I can recycle it. I appreciate that. Here are the sliders. How do they feel? Oh, they feel okay. And this is the... I think I know what this is, but I'll take a look at it later. The pins are all bent. Pots, fine, low end pots, a push button. I believe this is so, what does it say? Uh, a performance oriented momentary switch for extra distortion. So if you're in the club and everybody's jamming and it's rocking and you say, give them a little more screech. I'm sorry, I shouldn't. More magenta confetti. And in the little tea bag, again, I like their packaging except for the magenta uh, confetti. Hmm, it's a thing. Oh, it's a Allen wrench to mount the screws. Yeah, this is all the knobs. Knobs and some screws and one uh, cap for a switch. But I don't see a switch. Maybe there are two caps for the sliders? Yeah, there are caps for the sliders. Okay. 
So that's it. Uh, not much to the build. So this is going to go very fast and we'll be able to demo it pretty quickly. I'll get the soldering iron heated up and look for a build guide even though again I don't expect we need much of a build guide. But we'll get this thing put together. First thing we're going to do is we're going to put the two optic couplers on the board and we're going to do that by taking the legs, spreading them like so. They're going to go here like that. So we have to trim the leads a little bit. Basically cut them in half. And there's a little dot on the part and that dot corresponds to this little heavy white line on the circuit board. So it's going to mount like that and I got to going to have to splay the leads outward a little bit and I'm going to treat this like a surface mount part which means I'm going to put a little dab of solder here on the pad. Now I'm going to take the optocoupler Make sure the leads are all close to pads and I'm going to heat that little dot of solder I put on just a couple of seconds ago and the lead will sink into it. Let it cool and it's not going anywhere. Now I can do the other leads. That one didn't quite, it's not quite far enough on the solder pad, so I'll bend it a little bit. And as I said with the other one, and I've said it other times, with when you have surface mount components on the board, you have to be very careful with your soldering iron pin got bent up a little bit. You got to be very careful with your soldering iron to not dislodge or heat or otherwise touch any of the surface mount components that are already on the board or else you will be very sad. And again there are two resistors here and here you have to be very careful that you're not hitting them with your soldering iron while you're soldering. And that's it for the optocouplers. Just double checking the solder and double checking the dots too while I'm at it. And that is the electronic component assembly part of this build. Now we're just going to put all the mechanical components on and they're all pretty simple. Nothing out of the ordinary on these. And since there's no front panel for these to hold everything in place while we solder all the leads. I will solder as I go and I'm holding the slider with my finger while I do one leg. Take a look at it. It's all flat. Now we'll do the other one the same way. And again, I'm, I keep saying it because it's really important. These resistors around the, pin, uh, the pins down here are very close. So just be careful. Now let's see how the 
pots fit in. They clip in real securely. See how the uh, jacks go in? The jacks go in pretty securely also. But not too securely, so you do have to pay attention. There's another pot. Oh, I missed one pot. Because I was looking at the momentary I switch area and I didn't see this pot. And the push button, which is not polarized, because it's just making connections. Oops, and that pit leg bent too. There we go. Oh, let me get some to rest this on, because these jacks are a little bit loose. Get a little piece of foam. That'll help that. Good. And now I'll solder all these up. And that is all the soldering. Soldering iron off. And I will say this for the third or fourth time, but these legs are right amidst all these surface mount components. Just be very careful. The other thing I did, you might have seen me, if I didn't cut it, uh, I used thicker solder on the support legs here. One of the things about not having a front panel is when you're putting jacks in and taking them out, you're relying on the strength of the solder joint to keep the jack from coming loose. Typically, if you have a front panel, then you've got panel nuts and you're kind of sharing the uh, force between the solder and the front panel, which is locked down at numerous places by other uh, panel nuts. But we don't have that here. And this push button looks like it's simply bridging, uh, actually I'm not going to say that. I think it may be dumping this cap in uh, to give you a little extra burst of uh, whatever when you need it. Now we'll put the knobs on. And we get our power cord. And as he says, doesn't matter any which way you put it on. In fact, it's labeled as whatever. And that is it. Like a maybe 20 minutes. That's the front. And that's the back. And the iconography on this, on what the jacks do, is a little bit obscure. It's a little too cutesy for me. I like more descriptive in, out, resonance, whatever. Spell it out. Again, if you're the oddball in a rack who does, if you're the odd unit in the rack who does this and somebody's working fast or in the middle of something and they have to stop and think about what things are, that's never any good. I know it's artistic, but it's not as clear. So that's it. We'll go ahead and put it in the rack and see how it sounds. There we go. And we've got some LEDs. Blue one for frequency. Red one for resonance. Now, as I said, we've got a couple of... This, this being all non-standard, I had to look at the uh, oops, i got to turn the scope on. Uh, I had to look at the manual. So, 
Ah, uh, where are we? This, with a little downward curve, is the low pass filter. This, with the kind of full loop, is uh, the notch filter. Then we've got our trimmers for frequency and resonance. We've got that button. Uh, this is uh, feedback. And then, yes, these are touch plates. So we'll play with them a little later. And then this pot with a little uh, square in it is for accent. I mean, this jack is for accent. Now, I don't know what these two are for. Uh, he's got no indication as to what those other two jacks are for. We'll play around with it. Uh, are we plugged into the wrong... Oh, we are. Huh. I'm sorry, I'm plugged into the... Uh, I don't usually use that probe. I usually use the yellow probe. But that's okay. It'll all work. Now, let's get some sound out of here. Let me take this down some. So that's unfiltered. Now we'll go through the filter on the low pass side first. Let's do a little frequency shifting. feedback all the way out. I'm pressing the button. Turn feedback up a little more. Huh. You can hear it tailing off like that. I wonder what that is. It sounds like a cap discharging, of course. So I'm, I'm going to assume right now that these two jacks are for CV, for frequency and whatever. So I'm going to go ahead and plug the, an LFO in here. If I was going really fast, let me slow it down. Slow it way down. Turn it down. frequency. You can hear it. Let me try a different waveform. Let me try a square wave. I didn't do anything. Let me try a plain sign.
Okay, let's try the notch filter. I'm going to try a different waveform. I'm going to go ahead and put this uh, through. I'm going to trigger it with the sequencer. See if I get a better feel out of it with that because I'm not getting a great feel out of this. Okay. Thank you. 
That's what it sounds like. Uh, it's less aggressive than I expected. The sliders, you really have to be very sensitive as to where you put them in the knob positions. Putting the LFO uh, into the frequency and the resonance helped. Uh, so it's an interesting unit. I'm, I'm not sure I'm going to move it into my main rack. Uh, but again, a very, very simple build and not much space so it'll fit in any rack or a skiff and I hope you enjoyed the video.